I just want you to take a guess right now how we even get to this point, from point A to point B, because frankly, the video title is absolutely ridiculous. But this is something that genuinely happened, and I think it's a pretty interesting topic today. Because yes, and I can't believe I'm saying this, there was once a time when fish farts caused a diplomatic crisis. <laughs> Welcome to Brain Spill, the laziest show on the internet. My name is Tank, and we have to go back to a point in time where pretty much anything could cause the next global war. And I think you know what time we're talking about. That's right, the 1980s, the height of the Cold War between some of the world's biggest nuclear powers. On this episode of Diplomacy Gone Bad, we talk about the spat between Russia and Sweden, which all started with a submarine. In 1981, a Soviet submarine ran aground on the south coast of Sweden, just 10 kilometers, 6.2 miles, from a Swedish naval base. The Russians claimed that they were forced to crash into the shore because of severe distress and navigational problems. As to how true this statement actually is, who knows, and maybe that was genuinely true. However, people weren't very trusting of each other at this time, and ultimately, given the Red Scare that was going on, there was very much a game of cat and mouse trying to track down these very covert submarines in the waters around the Western nations. Yes, people were on the edge of their seats, hoping that the war would stay one of an ideological battle rather than an actual battle, or, heaven forbid, anything nuclear. And this was exactly what Sweden was worried about. What is this sub and why was it here? They presumed that it was more than a simple navigational problem and suspected that there may even be foul play involved. As a result, they secretly measured for radioactive materials using gamma ray spectroscopy. They detected what they were 90% sure was uranium-23, which was used for cladding in nuclear weapons inside the submarine, indicating that it is very likely nuclear armed. Whoa, I mean, this is pretty serious stuff, guys. If you've got a submarine that's armed with nukes, then, uh, yeah, things aren't going to be looking too well when you've got one that's ran adrift. So, basically what they did was they just assisted the sub, presuming that it did have navigational problems, back into international waters. But they didn't stop there. They did keep a track on where this sub was, just to make sure that there wasn't any foul play involved in what was really happening here. Because, day by day, they thought that something more sinister might be going on. These were very interesting times. You've got to have your wits about you. This is when the Swedish started picking up other signals, acoustic underwater sounds which the Swedes suspected was more Soviet submarine activity in their waters. This really started to become apparent in 1982. So Sweden launches numerous vessels, helicopters and submarines to follow and track these sounds for as far as they could to see if they could find anything in their waters. This was no small operation either. This went on for years and years and years, yet nothing was ever found. So this was either some incredibly advanced technology that the Soviets had on their hands, or perhaps it was something even more fishy than that. What was strange about this whole thing was that even after a large concerted effort, which was undertaken in 1982, there were reports of bubbles hitting the surface, which led onlookers to believe that there might have been something lurking in these waters. Like a submerged submarine, perhaps. During this time, the military even came up with a new system in order to determine how likely Soviet subs were in their waters. They basically made a scale on 1 to 6, and that scale would determine the likelihood of that being the case. So yes, as soon as these acoustic sounds were heard by the military, they were almost adamant that it was submarines, some nefarious activities going on in their waters. But I wonder what it could really be. They were so adamant that this was the case in fact, they identified this as a top level threat, an absolute certainty that this enterprise was being present. Which to be perfectly honest was an incredibly bold statement to make when they'd found no evidence of that being the case. Once the Cold War came to an end and the hip and cool 90s came around, they suspected that this might have been the end of it. However, the problem was, they were still picking up these signals. Surely, they can't still be operating in waters, you know, even after the Soviet Union collapsed, right? Things got even more heated when Sweden arranged for a security meeting at a secret naval base in Stockholm to discuss these signals. Scientists were brought into a room and they were played the sound clips by the officers, sounds which 
pretty much had not been heard outside of military circles for the first time. They assumed it sounded like the sound of a propeller, or a radar ping that you'd hear in the movies. But upon closer inspection and a breakdown of the sound patterns, it was determined that it sounded something like frying bacon. Like small air bubbles releasing underwater. Magnus Wahlberg, a professor of the University of Southern Denmark, was one of the scientists called to review these strange sounds, and was even part of a TED talk where he recalls his tale. But, funnily enough, they already had some insight into what was actually happening here. Herring. Yep, the fish we're talking about. Herring was the answer to this conundrum. What is causing this sound? Herring. So, these fish have a small bladder, in which is rather unique to this animal, allowing them to squeeze the bladder and release a short burst of air around them. Fish farts. Plain and simple, people. And yeah, that's why when herrings swim in big massive pools and they all get scared and swim away very quickly, they're able to use this air and propel themselves through the water. Pretty much fish farts. And it is these large simultaneous farts in the water that causes such a large noise underwater which can be picked up with these acoustic signals. And that, that was the thing that the Navy were picking up on for all those years. Assuming that it was a submarine. But it was, it was fish farts. While it was good that the Swedes were not being infiltrated for years and years on end, it did mean, however, that they'd spent years trying to find something that wasn't actually there. Well, technically it was there, but they were sending lots and lots of military hardware to go and find herring farting in the water. Yes, you simply can't make this stuff up. And there we have it, herring farts people. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.